What is up everyone, Steven here, and this is a Toshiba hard drive with 3 terabytes of space. This is a Toshiba hard drive with 2.73 terabytes of space. Now I'm no expert mathematician, but according to my calculations, those two numbers are not the same. And it's not unique to this device, nor is it unique to Toshiba. You'll find that it applies to basically any long-term storage device, whether it's a hard drive, a solid state drive, a flash drive, a memory card, or the flash storage in your smartphone. On all of those devices, the advertised capacity will not be the same as what you see in Windows. At this point, you might be feeling a bit like Obi-Wan here, but have no fear. Your confusion will be over in a few short minutes. Some people say that you lose capacity to operating system files, and this is true if you have an operating system installed on a drive, but it doesn't apply to this hard drive. I only use it for game and data storage, and even on drives where it does apply, the total capacity will still show the full space of the drive. In some situations, you may also lose some capacity to other partitions, but even looking at the total drive space in the Windows Disk Manager, it still shows a much lower capacity. Other possible sources of missing space, such as the device firmware, partition table, file system table, over-provisioning, and spare sectors, are either negligible with modern-sized storage, or are not counted towards the total capacity anyway. No, as a matter of fact, there is something else going on here. Something that is actually not the slightest bit sinister. So Toshiba advertised that this drive has three terabytes of space. Let's have a look at the unit they provided, terabyte. The latter half byte is the base unit of data, comprised of eight bits, each bit being a single binary digit, a zero or a one. The former half, tera, is a metric prefix that means 10 to the 12th power, which can also be expressed as 1,000 to the 4th power, or 1 trillion. This is the definition that Toshiba uses, and I know this because it says so right on the box. As you probably already know, we humans usually use a base 10 number system, decimal, and we generally like powers of 10. It's handy. After all, we do have 10 fingers and 10 toes. So to a normal human, powers of 10, such as 100 or 1,000, are generally considered to be nice round numbers. But computers use a base two number system, binary, so they generally find powers of two easier to work with. So instead of using a thousand for each ascending prefix, it is more elegant for computers to use a thousand twenty four for each ascending prefix. But of course it would be terribly inelegant and confusing to use the same prefixes to mean two different things depending on the context and it would basically subvert the whole point of using units in the first place. Knowing this, in 1998, the International Electrotechnical Commission published a set of binary prefixes based around 1024. They mimic the decimal prefixes, but they use by as the last syllable in the prefixes, and the abbreviations add i in the middle. Accordingly, the US National Institute of Standards and Technology requires that SI prefixes only be used to refer to powers of a thousand. The problem is that most operating systems, including Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS, are not in compliance with the NIST's requirements. They use the decimal prefixes and abbreviations to refer to the binary definition. In other words, the hard drive manufacturers are technically correct. So what I told you was true, from a certain point of view. They may be correct, but it is still confusing. Now, some operating systems and programs do use the correct terminology. If you run Linux on a machine, you'll notice that most of the time, file and drive sizes will have the letter I in the abbreviation, indicating that the unit prefixes are powers of 1024, and by extension, powers of 2. Some third-party programs on Windows also follow this convention, but the operating systems and programs that 99% of normal users operate on a regular basis are technically incorrect in their units. Fun fact, the Team Group SSD that I use in my laptop has a surprisingly thorough explanation of this right on the packaging. The moral of the story is that any time you get a storage device, it will appear smaller than advertised. How much smaller will depend on the units it's advertised in. If it's advertised in gigabytes, then it'll be about 6.9% smaller. And if it's advertised in terabytes, about 9.1%. So if you have 62 gigabytes of stuff to store, a 64 gigabyte flash drive will not cut it. Although, to be fair, if you're going to be close enough to capacity for this difference to matter, you should probably just get a larger drive anyway so you don't run into problems down the road. 
Some of you might be wondering if this same thing applies to RAM, and the answer is no, it doesn't. Both the hardware and software use the same definition of a gigabyte when it comes to RAM, and I'm pretty sure it's the binary definition. If you are missing some of your RAM, it's probably due to reserved memory. For example, if you have integrated graphics, the system will reserve a couple hundred megabytes of your system RAM to use as video memory. If you do use a discrete graphics card with its own video RAM pool, you should see exactly the advertised amount of RAM in your machine unless something else is reserving some system memory or unless your memory is just not seated. Now, one last thing I want to mention before I end this video is that we recently passed two significant milestones here on the channel. On January 5th, my first video on this channel turned one year old. The day after that, the channel hit 200 subscribers. That's kind of a cool, almost perfect coincidence there. So to those who have already subscribed, thank you. I hope the content so far is not disappointed. And to those who have not yet subscribed, should the urge strike you, I'm sure you know where to find that button. So thanks for watching, and I'll figuratively see you in the next one.